Welcome to Mythbusters ADHD edition. My name is Dr. Katherine Garforth from Garforth Education. Hi, my name is Selena Lee. I am the ADHD whisperer. We are working together to dispel some common ADHD myths. ADHD is due to bad parenting. And this is a huge misnomer and especially parents that have children with ADHD often get this unwanted advice where parents assume that they haven't tried some of the common things that are just magically going to take ADHD away. So, you know, traditional forms of discipline, like timeouts, uh, are not going to cure ADHD, and having them is not going to create the ADHD. The ADHD is intrinsic to the person. It's neurobiological in nature, so it's brain-based. And while there are things that you can do as a parent to make it better, there are things that you can do to make it worse, but it's not going to cause it. No, I, I totally agree here. You said um, that uh, all the free advice in the world you get when you have a baby, everyone comes at you with this advice, do this, do that. Oh, I did this, I did that. And you can be really overwhelmed, especially if ADHD is in your genetics. And um, I, I, in one way, was very unfortunate that I got the child that was so disruptive first because um, my younger one has ADHD and autism and um, anxiety as well, but they're like chalk and cheese sometimes. So he could, I could put him to sleep and he would just go to sleep. My first one wouldn't. He was like evil. And so <laughs> I... Um, tried everything, read all the books. When we got the diagnosis, I actually felt better. I was like, oh, it's not me. <laughs> and I find a lot of parents feel that way. I think it's a relief <laughs> that they've found some sort of uh, reason other than you're a bad parent. Well, and that's the thing, like it's, it's a diagnosis and it, it gives you that ability to um, identify the behavior to the ADHD. So when my child does this, it's because of the ADHD, right? They can compartmentalize that behavior, explain that behavior, and that leads to a better understanding within the relationship. And it does help the child and, you know, or the adult or whatever age they may be, realize that it's not because of who they are as a person because of how they've been raised or what they believe it's who they are because of their brain chemistry their brain physiology it's who they are on this point uh, it it says their traditional discipline does not cure nor create um, ADHD. With the parenting, we do have certain expectations of parents. We have what you should do and what you shouldn't do. And um, it all falls within the neurotypical realm of what you should and shouldn't do. So sometimes you do feel that you're trying to keep it that way in the neurotypical realm, you're not actually dealing with your reality. You're dealing with what you wanted it to be, what you think it should have been, what it could be if you tried hard enough. But sometimes it actually does take a shift in thinking from the parent to make some calm at home. Because, you know, they say, don't ask um, a one-legged person to run a two-legged race. Sometimes parents' expectations of their ADHD child aren't realistic. And that's exactly, um, especially where the conversation of executive functioning comes in, right? So executive functioning are brain-based procedures and the ability for your brain to act as the CEO and help you prioritize and do these things. Now, Individuals with ADHD and other neurodiversities have a leg in the development of executive functions. Executive functions are natural processes that your body is pre-wired to develop in the right circumstances. And they don't 
start developing until around age five in a neurotypical individual. Now, someone who is neurodiverse, there is a delay in this development between three and five years, sometimes longer. And these are executive functions develop into your 20s regardless of whether you're neurodiverse or neurotypical. So they have a long time to develop. And I think it can be really difficult for a parent that has an individual, or sorry, has a child with a neurodiversity because like, oh, your child's this old, they should be able to do this by now. But if they don't have the prerequisite executive functions and those have a delay in development, things like picking out your child's clothes in the morning, you know, that's something that you may still have to do because they don't have the ability to do that yet. And you're not able to relinquish control on that same comes with, you know, um, the personal care responsibilities and chores. Definitely, definitely. I find this a very um, challenging one. And um, I think it does take a long time to get your head around it. And uh, when you do, things do become more calm at home and there is more um, of a good rapport between you and your children. It is, it is a hard one um, to drop the expectations, but I feel it's, it's good to learn and educate yourself on these particular things. Like you said, it's the um, executive functioning, the extra detail, the extra thought, the higher um, hindsight and foresight and um, prioritization that really does take longer to, to, to de develop 